Apple just launched a new free camera app called Final Cut Camera. This app gives you manual control right on your iPhone when shooting videos. Now you can use this as a standalone app or pair it with Final Cut Pro for the iPad when doing live multicam. But for this video, we'll focus on the Final Cut Camera app and show you all the settings you need to know so that you can get started shooting quality videos on your iPhone. So we're now inside the Final Cut Pro camera app. And starting over here, we have our audio meters. And when the audio gets too loud, you'll see that it hits the yellow red area, which you generally want to avoid. Then right next to it, we have additional camera settings, which we will look at later. Then over here, we have our frame rate, resolution, dynamic range, and codec. So let's first look at the frame rate. Tapping on it reveals us different frame rate options. So 24, 25, 30, and 60 frames per second. When I'm doing a talking head video, like right now, I set the frame rate to 25 or 24 frames per second. And when shooting in slow motion or B-roll, then I set the frame rate to 50 or 60 frames per second. Now, I really wish they also had 50 frames per second available for those that are filming in Europe. Next up, we have resolution. So 720p, 1080p, and 4K. Now, I always pick the highest resolution, which is 4K. Then we have the dynamic range option. So we can shoot in HDR or SDR. And what's really cool is when I select SDR, it will also change the preview. So right now I'm looking at an SDR preview. I actually like the SDR look, it gives it a more film-like look, but that is for you to decide. Also, if you're not familiar with converting HDR into SDR, and you're just starting out, then leaving it in SCR will make your life easier. Then below we have our codecs, so we can shoot in HEVC, which is H.265 or Apple ProRes. Now if you want to choose Apple ProRes, you have to also head up back to the dynamic range option and select log, which will give you this flat picture profile and allows you to record in the highest quality possible, which is ProRes 422HQ. Now keep in mind that the file size are huge, but you can actually connect an SSD and record the footage externally. And you can also do that with HEVC if you wanted to. Now to head back, just select the X icon at the bottom left. Then below we have the live multicam option, which we will look at later. So right over here, we have the remaining recording time, which is nine hours and two minutes. So right now the camera settings are set to 4K, 25 frames per second, HDR, HEVC. But if I change the codec from HEVC to Apple ProRes, we only have a remaining recording time of 12 minutes. Then over here, we can see the battery level, which is at 90%. Then to our right, we can set the display orientation. So right now it's set to unlock. So when I take my phone off the tripod and set it to vertical, you'll see that the icons will change as well as the display. When I now set it to left, so my camera is to the left side and I change the orientation, it will keep that locked. Then we also have right, so it will flip it and we have portrait which will set it to portrait mode now most of the time i shoot in a 16 by 9 format so i choose the option left which keeps it locked this way if you want to lock the focus and exposure same on the default camera app you can tap hold on the screen and a e a f lock will appear and i like to use this setting for run and gun shooting but if you want more control you can always set your shutter speed and iso in the exposure settings. Then over here, we have our focus settings. Selecting that will reveal a slider. So if I adjust the slider, you'll see that I can manually set the focus. And it also does it really smoothly. But in general, I keep it in auto and instead like to lock the exposure. But if you want to do like a rack focus, then this is really great. To head back, I'm gonna select the AF icon. Then below we have our exposure. Selecting that will reveal another slide. So this will change the overall exposure in our image. So as I slide up, you can see how the exposure increases. And as I slide down, it decreases the exposure. Now this is like the exposure compensation tool on the default camera app, which changes the entire exposure in your image. But what I like to use instead of the exposure slider 
is by tapping the auto, I have the option to set the shutter speed and ISO. So when I'm filming in 4K 25 frames per second, I set my shutter speed to 1 over 50 and the ISO I keep as low as possible. Now, if I have to increase the ISO, I don't go above 800. And by having my shutter speed double my frame rate, I'm able to get that natural motion blur as you can see for a more filmic look. Now, if I increase the shutter speed, for example, so when I now wave my hand, there is less motion blur. So I'm going to set the ISO to 64. That's as low as I can go on the iPhone 15 Pro Max when using the selfie camera. And when filming outside on a bright sunny day, then you would need something like a VND filter to compensate for the exposure. So now that the exposure is locked, I can tap on the background which will set focus on it, but not change the exposure as I have it locked over here. So if the icon turns yellow, that means it's locked. And then I can focus back on me again. Now we can also do it the other way around where I have the exposure set to auto and the focus locked. So let's do that. I'm gonna head over to the exposure tool and I'm gonna change it from manual to auto. I'm gonna select the auto focus and I'm gonna set that to manual. I'm gonna return by selecting the MF. So when I now tap on the screen, it will adjust the exposure. Now it isn't so obvious because the lighting condition right now is, is balanced. Now once you lock the focus and exposure in the settings, tapping on the screen won't do anything, preventing you from accidentally changing the settings. So moving on, we have our white balance settings. So let's select that. Again, we can slide up or down to make the shot warmer or cooler. By selecting fixed, we can choose between presets. So daylight, shadow, cloudy, tungsten, forensic, and flash. Now by choosing one of these presets, it will lock it to that value. What I prefer to do is choose automatic so that the iPhone will set the white balance for me. And in general, it does a pretty good job. So right now it's set to 5,000 Kelvin. And when I head back to auto, I can select fixed and it will lock it at that value. And this is really important because you don't want your colors to shift while you record your video. Below we have the zoom control. So tapping on it will reveal a slide and we can zoom in or zoom out. And this is a digital zoom, so it won't switch between the lenses. And I rarely use the digital zoom because it just degrades the quality the further I zoom in. And what's also nice is that I can see the current focal length, which is 23 millimeter. Then over here, we can switch between the selfie and rear camera. Then over here, we have the record button. Now, unlike on the default camera app, once you start recording on the Final Cut Pro app, you can't switch between the cameras. If you do a lot of zooms while recording, then I recommend using the default camera app as it will optically zoom in instead of digitally. Then below we have our media library and we can also share it by selecting the camera icon on the bottom left. And this allows me to transfer this footage directly into the Final Cut Pro app on my iPad. Now the Final Cut Pro camera app will store the media separately, so not in the camera roll app. So by heading to the top right, you can select all media, which means all the media that you recorded on the Final Cut Pro camera app will be stored here. So let's now look at some of the advanced settings. So head up here to this gear icon, Starting with the preference, we can set our codec format, dynamic range. We can enable stabilization. So if you're doing a lot of handheld shots where you want the footage to be smooth, then enabling stabilization will reduce the shakiness in your video. Then you have mirror front camera. So once I start and stop recording with the mirror front camera enabled, it will flip that video afterwards. And you can see the difference right over here. See how it flipped the image. Let's now head over to the tools. So we have grid overlay, 
And this enables the rule of thirds as you can see and divides the image into nine parts, which helps set my composition properly. I can also choose the aspect ratio. So when it's turned off, it will give me the 16 by nine aspect ratio, but I can also choose square. So when I head back, it will give me the square grids. And when choosing the four by three, it will give me the four by three grids. So if you're shooting for social media like Facebook or Instagram, these grids will help guide your shot. Then we have overexposure indicator. Enabling that will show what's overexposed in my image. So the red area shows me that this part over here is overexposed. Then I can enable focus peaking. So the green area shows what's in focus. So if I head to the focus settings, so you can see my hand is now in focus. And if I focus on my face, you can see it gets greener. I'm going to focus back on my finger. I'm going to now focus on the background. You can see how green the plant is over here. Let's now head over to audio. We can also select an audio source. So either the internal mic on my iPhone 15 Pro Max, or I can also connect an external mic, the Rode VideoMic Mi C, and it should then show up and it will automatically select the external mic and look at the audio meters and I tap on the microphone, you can see that the Rode Video Mic Miel is selected. Now this not only works with the shotgun mic, you can also connect a wireless microphone like the DJI Mic 2. Cinematic mode and slow motion is not available in the Final Cut camera app. These shooting modes remain in the default camera app. In a separate video, I will show you how to use the iPad's live multicam feature, how you can connect up to four iPhones and control everything from the iPad. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. As always, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.